Hi friends. So I'm currently waiting on a couple of parts to be delivered for the DIY Murphy desk that I'm working on, which I also hinted at in my last video. So if you missed that one, check it out. And spoiler alert, I'm really hoping to spend the first part of 2021 giving this shed shop a well-deserved makeover. And because of that, I've been working pretty hard to pare down on some of the things that I already have in here to prep for that organizational challenge. So basic DIY Huntress logic tells me that waiting for a delivery plus having to pare down on some things equals a free day in my weekend schedule, which naturally equals me challenging myself to a one day project using materials I already have in my workshop. Today I'm gonna to make a DIY wall mounted bike rack in one day using materials that I already have in this shed shop. This is gonna be a really similar project to something I already have on my channel, but because we are in a new space, that specific bike hanger doesn't work for the wall that we wanted to hang it on. So today I'm gonna to make something a little more modern and a little more sleek to fit our space. And since I literally only have one day to do this, let's get started. Like I mentioned in my introduction, there are some big changes happening in this small shed shop very soon, which means that there are also some big changes that need to happen to my hoarded collection of lumber. And if you've been following for a while, you will know that my other half and I moved into a 525 square foot apartment about seven months ago. And that apartment is slowly becoming very crowded with bicycles because he is a cyclist and it is the off season, which means that we need some new housing for his bikes. So to help solve that issue of bike storage, I partnered up with my amazing friends at Dot Products to create a fun, sleek, and modern bike rack that we can hang on the wall to store one of his bikes on. Now, this specific project was completely inspired by a bike rack that I saw on CB2's website. I've linked that below this video if you want to check it out. But instead of basically taking the dimensions off the website, I decided to make our own version that will fit his bike perfectly, as well as some of his accessories. Now to get started, I clearly grabbed a whole bunch of walnut from my scrap piles and began to cut them into the pieces that I needed for the bike rack. And first, I really wanted to start by laminating some of these walnut pieces together to create a bottom shelf for the wall mounted bike rack. And I did this by sanding down the edges super smooth and then gluing them together using some DAP carpenters glue. And then I clamped them together and allowed them to sit clamped for a couple of hours. At this point, I also made sure to just clean up some of that extra squeeze out using a wet paper towel, and this is gonna make sanding these boards so much easier later. It was then time to move on to the rest of the build, but not before a quick snack break. Snack break? I brought you some snacks. Oh my God, you're the best. Woo! Snack break and a one day project. I'm still gonna finish this project, but I'm still gonna take a snack break. Thank you. No problem. <laughs> I'm so spoiled. <laughs> Fun fact of the day, in case you were ever wondering why some of my projects take way longer than they're supposed to, it's because I literally need to take a snack break and or a puppy play date break with every single project that I do. But anyway, back to the project. So at this point, it was time to cut the side pieces and the front piece and the back piece for this wall hanging bike rack. And I did this again using some leftover walnut that I had from the DIY shoe bench project that I posted on my channel a while back. And as always friends, if you are looking for some written details about this project, such as dimensions or materials or the tools that I used, you can check all of that out on my website by clicking on the link below this video. At this point, I had cut all of the pieces I needed for my project and it was time to move on to the side pieces where I am going to drill a hole or an opening for the bike to sit. So in full transparency, I actually used a Forstner bit for this step, but then ended up making these holes much bigger later with a jigsaw. But I'll walk you through what I did here. Essentially, I marked exactly where I wanted these holes to be, knowing full well that I only needed like half circles instead of full circles. And I clamped two pieces of wood together to help the Forstner bit bite the wood evenly, drilled all the way through, unclamped those pieces of wood, and then sanded them down. Unfortunately, as stoked I was about this method working, there was still some tear out left over from the Forstner bit. So to fix this, I used some DAP carpenter glue, glued an ample amount of glue into the opening, and then pretty much was actually able to locate the piece of wood that was torn out when I was using the Forstner bit. I then applied that to that chunk that was missing, taped it into place, and then allowed that to dry. Honestly, shout out to my buddy, Eric Curtis, who I collaborated with back on that dovetail joint box that I made because he taught me this trick and it works beautifully. Once this was sanded, you literally can't even tell that there was any wood missing at all. 
Okay, so as these dried, I moved on to sanding these openings to make them as symmetrical as possible, but I don't know why I'm even showing this because I actually ended up not even going with these initial holes that I drilled. I guess I'm showing this to show you that you can sand these beautifully and they look awesome, but spoiler alert, I ended up making these holes so much bigger later in the process. At this point though, it was time to attach the sides of the wall hanging bike rack to the back of the wall hanging bike rack. And I did this by gluing the pieces into place, clamping them, making sure that they were a perfect 90 degrees, and then drilling them from the backside using some countersunk screws. At this point, I removed my painter's tape band-aid situation from that wood tear out fiasco. And then I attached the front of the bike rack to the side pieces using wood glue and also using nails. Once that basic box shape of the bike hanger was assembled, it was then time to unclamp the bottom panels. At this point, they've been sitting for a couple hours. They were super dry, super strong, and I felt super comfortable using them for the bottom panel. I actually started by cutting them down to their perfect size on my miter saw, and then once they were trimmed to size, I then sanded them down nice and smooth. I've said it before on my channel and I will say it again, you can 100% make a perfectly glued up panel without a planer in your workshop. And if you're curious as to how to do this in detail, I do have a video on my channel that I will link to where I made a cutting board without a planer and it's super, super helpful. But back to the build. So at this point it was time to add that bottom panel to the bike hanger. And I did this by using an ample amount of carpenter's glue, spreading it super evenly, and then attaching that bottom panel to the rest of the rack using pin nails, the same exact way that I did for that front panel. I then just wiped away that excess glue using a wet paper towel. And at this point decided that I wanted to add a round over to the outside edge of this wall mounted bike rack. Now this is totally optional if you don't have a router or if you don't want to add this detail, I just thought it would be a really nice little detail to add. So I did that using my router and then sanded everything flat using my sander. So at this point, I'm sure you're like, yeah, Sam, you're almost done with this video and this project, but like, nope, I'm not because I decided that I thought the openings for the bike itself were too small. So I decided to use my jigsaw to make them bigger. And I'm actually really glad that I did that because the bike now fits perfectly. <laughs> And in terms of woodworking, assembly, building, whatever, at this point, what was kind of left for me in this process was to pre-drill some openings that I'm going to add screws through to screw into the actual wall. And just like the back of the bike rack, I did use my countersink drill bit here to make those countersunk holes so that the screws sit further inside of the build. And they're just like a sleeker and neater looking method of hanging screws through this wall mounted bike rack. And once that was done, I gave the entire piece a final sanding to about 320 grit and then decided to use a spray polyurethane to seal in the entire build. I then let that dry and moved on to adding some foam pieces to the openings just to cushion his bike when we do hang it on the rack. Honestly, I didn't use anything fancy for this. I basically used that weatherproofing foam tape that you find in the air conditioning aisle of Home Depot. Now, even though this build itself was done in one day, one thing that I did add last minute before hanging it in the apartment were small hooks on the side for things like his sunglasses or his heart rate strap or whatever else he needs to hang up with his bike. I then removed my piece of artwork that I hung up when we first moved into the apartment and then began to replace it with the bike rack. Now, here's the thing. I absolutely love this piece of artwork. I made it on my channel a while back and I did not really want to remove it from the wall. However, we do live in a really small space and one of the things that I do value over handmade artwork sometimes is creative space saving solutions, especially for small living spaces. So hanging this bike just made so much sense for our needs and that is why I replaced it with this bike rack and I actually really do love the way that this thing turned out and it worked out perfectly. And honestly, in a really fun way, now this bike rack as well as my other house bike have become their own pieces of artwork in our apartment. And I'm really glad that we ended up swapping out the handmade artwork for this functional storage solution. P.S. In case anyone is interested, I was able to hang one of the screws directly into a stud and then I used heavy duty wall anchors for the other two and it's working beautifully. 
I mentioned this in my apartment makeover video, but moving into a space is always a continuous work in progress. You think you want it one way when you move in, but as you start to settle, you realize that certain things don't work or you need to do certain things different ways. And that's exactly what happened with this bike rack and this bike storage solution. And I'm so happy about it. Even though we've been in this space for seven months, I am already predicting that there are so many more things that we are going to want to alter and change as we continue to settle into the space. And I can't wait to see where that journey takes us. In the meantime, though, I do hope that you love this this project as much as we do and that if you do live in a small space and are also an avid cyclist that this project is a helpful one for you. As always friends if you like this video please make sure to subscribe to my channel for more projects in the future. I love you guys so much. Thank you for all the support and the love that you give me on a regular basis. I cannot wait to show you what else I have in store for this channel and for you guys but until then friends happy DIYing.